Welcome to the Inner Circle, where we explore behind the scenes of Inner Space concerts. Who are the performers, the supporters, and the people of classical music? Clarinetist Eileen Walsh has held the position of second clarinet and bass clarinet with Symphony Nova Scotia since October 2007. She has been a part of many ensembles such as South Bend Symphony, Rhapsody Quintet, and has co-founded Fifth Wind Woodwind Quintet in the Jolly Moore Trio. Tune in to hear more about Eileen's love of chamber music, teaching, claymation, and her upcoming concert on April 13th. been a part of many ensembles. What's your favorite part about working with any other musicians? I think it's actually the reason I do this. I, I, I don't know. There's something about how you connect with other people when you're playing. That, that I think that's why I'm in it, honestly. Do you have a favorite collaboration that you've done before? Oh, oh my gosh. So many. I, th I think there, there are people that are favorite collaborators. They're, they're just personalities that work, and that, that makes the collaboration really wonderful. I mean, I've worked with some, I think with a, a wind instrument, often you pair with piano when you're doing solo stuff, so you have a really, really great connection with a lot of piano players. But there's also the different feeling of the collaboration of a big ensemble where you have so many people in doing the same thing at the same time, and that's really, really exciting. So. It's a different kind of uh, sort of powerful music making. Yeah. And you're part of a wind quintet that you and Jack have co-founded, Fifth yeah. Wind. How is that different from the piano, like you said, of that collaboration type where you're all woodwinds playing together? I think, again, it has to do with different personalities because that, that ensemble was formed because of the people who wanted to play together. So it's a different set of personalities, and the more people you have, the more ideas you have. And you know, the fact that we all played wind instruments meant we were looking at a very specific genre of repertoire and uh, commissioning for a very specific ensemble. And there is a really the wind quintet has a really specific tone color. It's something where it's a really recognizable sound. So you develop a sound as an ensemble, and so that's maybe the special thing about that group is the sound we developed. Yeah, I feel like it's very interesting because there's probably not a lot of wind quintets compared to like string, like quartets and other instruments. Yeah, I mean, it's it's our staple wind genre, really. It's, it's the ensemble we are all sort of start gravitating towards the students when we have enough players to do that. So it's our, it's kind of our string quartet, right? Yeah, it's really yeah. interesting. And you also do teaching on the side. What has been the most interesting part that your students have taught you or any stories that you have to share about that? Hmm. Oh, man. Uh, I've been teaching since I was, I think, 16. You know, when you start helping out other kids in your school or your band teacher sort of directs you to be more of a mentor. But I think uh, a lot of the memorable moments in teaching for me have to do with why people come to music. And I, I find teaching adult students really special for that because they're incredibly motivated and disciplined. Um, so sometimes the passion that people have bring to their lessons is really exciting for me. But also uh, finding people with their own uh, idea of what's important in terms of where their path needs to go and using what resources and experience you have to guide them on their path instead of imposing sort of a set expected, this is where your music studies take you. I find it really interesting to follow someone else's path. Yeah, everyone has a different reason for yeah. starting the instrument, like you said, and therefore has all kinds of different paths and opportunities that they want to pursue. So it must be very special to be able to be a part of that and share that with that person. Yeah, absolutely. And and watching them, you know, watching 10 years out what they're doing now, you know, seeing where, where that path has led them now and whether it's where they expected to go or whether it's whether their path is taken many turns and especially in this day and age of maybe not focusing on a career as performing musician necessarily 
you know, there, there are so many different paths that you can take other than maybe the one you thought you were going to take when you were 17. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And uh, you also have started a new hobby from Interspace Concerts. We saw the collimation of Stephen the Unicorn, Absolutely. which has been very special and funny and interesting. How did you come up with this idea and what does the process look like? Because I know it's a lot of work to just make a short clip. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think. I think there are a lot of things about claymation that are really, really attractive because it's it's just a vehicle for humor in itself, right? And I, I think finding humor, especially right now, is really important. I mean, I've always, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I was always into ceramics and all that kind of fine detailed work with clay. But the claymation, I think, is just because it, it's really entertaining. And I just, the, the real reason it happened actually is because I, I, I loved watching everybody's sort of the suddenly, you know, the eruption last February and March of COVID videos of everybody who lost all their performing work and they were recording in their basement and just putting music out there for people. But I didn't really want, I didn't, I wasn't really excited about the idea of showing myself playing in my basement. <laughs> and so I wanted something else to look at. And it, it was kind of exciting because I realized that it's now really entertaining to children as well. And they're mm -hmm. hearing the music, but, you know, even just watching with my own family, they're so very invested in Stephen because he is uh, my youngest stuffed unicorn. <laughs> and he himself has already developed a lot of personality in the short time he's been in our family. But the clay version of Stephen was really interesting to them, too. And so I think it was just fun to have something that they were also invested in. Yeah, that's so fun. So did the boys actually help you make the clay, Stephen? No, but every time I did a work with this, because it was just, you know, hours of intense stuff, and usually I did it when they were at school, because <laughs> if one false move and you're back to square one. But they, every time I made one, they would go at it themselves. They would start making their own, and they did a lot of stop motion on their own. With They would take a, an iPad with some software and do their own stop motion. That's so yeah. interesting. So the different movements are all different takes, are they? Like, how does that process work of him? Because he's kind of moving with the music, kind of playing the clarinet. Oh, with yeah. You. I mean, I'm, I'm such a, an animation hack, right? This is why it's, I think, interesting for me was just because I'm, I'm not good at it and I wanted to learn more about it. And so you're creating sequences of motion and then putting them to the right timing afterwards. Oh, okay. So you can you can have a storyboard and do all that stuff, but when it comes to the, the meat and potatoes of the music, you just need to have certain motions that work as a sequence, and then you can put them into the music. Yeah. I'm sure someone else who's actually in the field would have a much more streamlined and logical way to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> How long did that process take then for you just to do your first video? Oh, my gosh. I think I recorded the music part in like one take, maybe two takes. And then there was two weeks of photography and computer animation. Yeah. And I had lots of help with that too. Yeah, it's a whole process, but it turned out so good. And yeah, we're looking forward to hopefully, do you think you'll be doing more of Steven the Unicorn in the future? Maybe. It's a good question. I have to figure out, you know, it's, it's, it had a kind of a, a special place in the last year. Mm -hmm. But um, I just have to think about where he might be going next. I had a couple of ideas, but because we've started playing actual live concerts for people, they've <laughs> got slightly sidelined. Yes, yeah. And speaking of concerts, your concert on April 13th is coming up from Bowling to Beep Bop. Yeah. Who came up with that name? I think it was Jack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the concert without giving too much away and yeah, what's a little sneak peek of what it's going to be like? Absolutely. Um, well, I can tell you what the title has to do with for sure. Um, the bowling has to do with a game of nine pin bowling that was played during Mozart's time. And uh, there's a, a little legend that going around that he claimed that he wrote this piece during a bowling game. Uh, <laughs> I think there might have been another piece, a set of horn duos that actually had the inscription written during nine pins. So this one might be more hearsay, but it makes for a really good story and a really good poster. <laughs> yeah. Um, the bebop part has to do with a, 
uh, a mentor I worked with at Indiana University who lived through the bebop era as a jazz musician and just became sort of a jazz pedagogy legend through the decades. And uh, he wrote a clarinet sonata that I really like. So that that's in there. Nice. And who will you be playing with? I have the pleasure of playing with uh, Sue Sale on viola. And we're having Simon Docking play piano. It's really, really exciting because it's a great group of people, lots of energy, and lots of beautiful tone colors in this program. It's, it's really, really a pleasure to collaborate with them. Well, that's exciting. We're looking forward to that and glad that we'll be able to see it in person if you'd like to or online. So, yeah, we're looking forward to your concert, Eileen, and thank you for joining me today to learn a little bit more about yourself and a little bit more about your background and what you do outside of your music. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks. The Inner Circle theme was composed and performed by Caitlin Wheaton. This podcast was created by Caitlin with production support from Joe Pops of Joe Pops Design and Inner Space founder and artistic director Jack Chen. For more information on Inner Space concerts and to get tickets for our live and online events, go to innerspaceconcerts.ca. Inner Circle is an Inner Space Concerts podcast. Thank you for listening.